This video will be going over how to design a buffer. Uh, basically, there's two concepts when you're designing a buffer. You want the buffer to resist pH change, and you also want the buffer to be very concentrated. So those are those are the two ideas. So that's, I mean, if we go back to our buffer concepts videos, uh, that was that was in the basic concepts of the buffers you want it to be able to eat up any acid that's added or eat up any base that's added so we have this conjugate acid base pair um, and you want it's there so that the conjugate base can eat up any acid and the conjugate acid can eat up any base that's present so to illustrate this um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a um, actually a titration curve even even though we haven't gotten to this topic yet um, because it'll show it graphically, it'll show what um, what's happening when you have a buffer. Um, so what this is saying here is you want the base acid ratio to be as close to one as possible. So what you want is, so you want, pH to equal pKa of the acid base pair so and this happens when your concentration of base on your acid base conjugate pair the concentration of the base equals the concentration of the acid okay and we could show that here let's say we have pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. So if this is one molar and this is one molar, you end up taking the log of one, which is zero, okay? So when these concentrations are equal, then pH equals pKa. Um, and we could see this. So what's so important about when that happens is, let me draw this titration curve, okay? And the titration curve is gonna show um, volume or pH on the y-axis and it's going to show volume of either OH or I'll put H plus so like a strong acid or strong base being added um, so typically it would look like this your pH curve will look like this this is if you started with a uh, acid and you added a uh, base over time so it's um, so when you titrate, you have your burette and then some OH is coming out. Okay, and then it's being added to a beaker. And inside the beaker, you have the conjugate acid base pair inside the beaker. So you have HA and A minus. So you have the that pair. So um, this right here is known as the buffer region right here. Okay, this segment right here, this piece right here is the buffer region during this region you could see that there's no you could see that there's no change in y so this is there's basically no slope right here is very very small so you see um that right here this whole during this whole time you have both conjugates are present so let me um describe what happens here this right here is the equivalence point in a titration so this is the equivalence point um, and right here is when your moles of strong acid equals the moles of the weak base um, so if you had an earth table that would be your actually I just messed up on my description there let me go back so this is when your moles of strong base because you're, we're adding a base over time equals your moles of weak acid okay and if you did a if this were you know like a buffer problem and you set up your earth table so you're adding a strong acid strong base to your weak acid okay and it's gonna make the conjugate base so if we did an earth table this would be let's say this is like five moles and this is five moles. So on your F line, it's going to be zero and zero. So there's no buffer here. So there's no buffer anymore. 
at the equivalence point. Okay, so that's why you see that's why you see this big jump in the pH from here to here. So right when the buffer is totally consumed, that's when you get to the equivalence point. So you see this huge jump. It's not able to resist pH change when that F line is zero like that. Okay, and so what's the only thing present there actually is let's say you had five originally here. So these, this is gonna be minus five, minus five, this will be plus five. So the only thing present would be the conjugate, which is why the pH is sort of alkaline. It's actually higher than seven, okay, for this titration curve. Okay, but back to the buffer region. So here we see that there is no slope right here and it's resisting pH change. Um, so where is pH equal to pKa? It's right here, okay, right in the middle. So I'll draw a big star right there. So this is the significance of this point, pH. This is called the halfway point. The pH equals the pKa, and your concentration of base equals your concentration of acid for the conjugate pair at that point. Okay, so if you added any, if you added any base, it can, your buffer can consume this much base. Okay. So your buffer, so if you added this, your HA, the weak acid, can consume the maximum uh, strong base added because you started right in the middle. Your buffer can also consume the maximum of strong acid added. Okay. So if you were to add, so in this case, if you added, if you added a strong acid, your conjugate base is there to consume the maximum strong acid added. Okay, and let me uh, complete the notes on this for the purple one. So here's where you're adding strong base, okay? And so if you if you start off right here in the middle with your let's say your HA let's say your HA is like one molar and your A minus is also one molar. Okay, when you start off like that, okay, this is present to eat up as much strong base as it can, okay, before it it um gets fully consumed. So once it gets fully consumed, you don't know you no longer have a buffer. That's what's uh shown here in red. Um and um so and then you have also the maximum amount of conjugate base that's there. So this can eat all the strong acid that you might that might be added to this buffer. Okay? And then once again that's that's a whole point of a buffer is to be able to do this to resist pH change. So what makes a great buffer is when you have equal amounts, equal concentrations, or you pick a conjugate acid base that has the same pKa as the P desired pH for the buffer. Okay, and we'll we'll go into a problem where uh, this where we go over this, um, where like you have to choose the the correct conjugate pair to match the pH because you want this, you want the ratio of acid and base to be as close to one as possible for it to uh, resist pH change. Okay, the other, the other thing you desire when you're making a buffer is, there's one other point about buffers, is you want the, the, the conjugate acid base uh, to be significantly more concentrated than the strong acid or base being added to it. Okay, so this is, uh, here's an example I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna work through this problem where we have a, um, low concentration and one where we have a high concentration. So here's an example. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to use this conjugate acid base pair. So I'm going to use ammonia and the ammonium ion.
Okay, and the Ka for this is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. And the PK, which will be useful for the buffer problem, is 9.25. So here's an example where I'm going to have the same buffer uh, concentration, but different, sorry, the same buffer pH, but I'm going to vary the concentration. So example one, or example A, is this pair, NH3, NH4 plus, and it's going to be in these amounts. So it's going to be 0 0.50 molar and, sorry, 0 0.050 molar. And the acid, I'm going to have 0.15 molar of the acid. Okay, so if I calculate the pH of this, it's 9.25 plus the log of the concentration of base. This is my base. This is my acid over acid. So 0 0.050 divided by 0 0.15. Okay, and my pH is 8.77. Okay, next... I'm going to do this problem. I'm going to do this same problem with a higher concentration, but the same ratio. So I'm going to do the same problem with 0.5 molar and 1.50 molar. Okay, so again, so if I do this, calculate the pH of this solution, it's the same ratio as I had before, but as you see, it's 10 times the concentration of what I had before. So the pH is actually the same. So I have solution A and I have solution B. Okay, to solution A, I'm gonna add the same amount of acid. So I'm gonna add 0 0.040 moles of H plus to one liter of solution. Okay, and then watch what happens to both of these. So I'll add the same to this solution, to solution B. Okay, so there, so we have a strong acid and we're adding it to a buffer. So it's going to be NH3. My base will react with the acid that's there. Okay, and it's gonna form the conjugate. I'll set up my earth table. Okay, and it said I have one liter of solution. So that means I have 0 0.050 moles and I'm adding 0 0.040 moles. And I had 0.15 moles of this to start. Okay, so this will run out. And as you could see, this really d uh, dented, put a huge dent in the conjugate base I have. Okay, I only have 0 0.010 left over. Okay, and this will be consumed. Okay, and then this, product side will, will increase to 0.19. Okay, as you can see, the 0 0.040, the 0 0.040 uh, put a big dent in the amount of base I have. So it really disrupts that ratio a lot. And you'll see that it's going to really hammer the pH. Okay, so it's going to change it by a lot. So my pH will be 9.25 plus the log of base 0 0.010 over acid 0.19. Okay, and if I calculate this, I get a pH of 7.97. Okay, now I'm going to do the same with a solution that's 10 times as concentrated. So this, this would this was 0 0.50. This is 0 0.040. So compared to the acid that's being added, it's way more concentrated, nearly 10 times. So, and this was 1.50. Okay, so this will go down. This gets consumed. And this goes down to 0.46. And this side goes up to 1.54. Okay, so you see the ratio didn't get disrupted very much in this example because I, because it was so much more concentrated. So this is 9.25 plus the log of 0.46 over 1.54. Okay, 
and I calculate this and I get 8.73. So in conclusion, we see that this changed by a whole pH point. So this actually got 10 times more acidic and this actually barely changed from what we had before because here's our ratio before and then here's what happened after we added the acid. So it barely affected that ratio. Um, and here you could tell that it really, it really made a huge dent. It really punished that ratio a lot because this was, uh, in, in comparison to the conjugate, it was pretty concentrated. But here it was barely anything of this, of what you started with. So it barely disrupted this ratio. Okay, so it was, our buffer was able to resist pH change much better than it did here. Okay, so that's the second condition that you want for your buffers, is you want them to be concentrated compared to the acid or base that's being added to it. Okay, so moving on, let's do a couple examples. Or actually, before we do that, I want to show a useful form of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for buffer problem solving. Um, so if we rearrange this, so if we, if we write out the, our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we get pH equals pK plus the log of base over acid. I'll put concentration of base over concentration of acid. Um, now, if we solve for this, if we isolate this, let's move the pKa over to this side. Okay, and then we'll take the, the um, inverse log of both sides, and then we get this. So we get the base, concentration of base over concentration of acid equals 10 to the pH minus the pKa. Okay, and this is pretty useful for buffer design questions, this equation here. as the title of the slide implies. Okay, there's another form that's even more useful if you're given um, set concentrations. You'll see in the your turn that you um, that I have one of those kinds of problems. So if we use a little bit of substitution, so let's take our equation that we had. Concentration of base over concentration of acid 10 to the pH minus pKa. Um, now, if you recall, the brackets mean molarity. So it's the molarity of the base. Um, and if you um, remember for buffers, you could also plug in moles. Okay, so for buffers, we can use moles. for the ratio. Okay, so if you can use moles, then the moles of base over the moles of acid equal 10 to the pH minus the pKa. And then using substitution, we have moles equals molarity times volume. So this one is, this is useful for um, if you're given set concentrations, like for example, if you have 0 0.50 molar, um, this, is, this is actually the question in the year turn, um, chlorous acid and 0 0.50 molar of the conjugate, the uh, chlorite ion, um, then what volumes of each would you need to use to make a pH, a buffer with pH of 2.00? Okay, so in that question, you're solving for this volume of the acid, and you're solving for what volume of base. So if we, um, we need to include the volume term to do this. So if we use some substitution, we can get this, the molarity of the base times the volume of base so we're we're just using we're just plugging this right here in for moles right here using substitution over 
the molarity of acid over volume of acid equals 10 to the pH minus pKa. Okay, and if they are going to have the same volume, then you could call volume B X. So you could call volume B X, and you could call volume A 1 minus X, where the total volume is one liter. So if you desire one liter of buffer, you can call volume B X and volume A 1 minus X. Okay, and this will allow you to solve for the volume of each, okay, using this equation. So I'm going to put a box around this. So you want to refer back to this part of the video. So this uh, for when asked to solve for volume. of each conjugate okay and you want to refer back to this slide for those that kind of question okay which is coming up in the your turn okay so I'm gonna do this one example so it says consider the acids in the table which acid would be the best choice for preparing a one liter buffer with a pH of 4.35 so here here's a um, here's a table and remember the first condition is we want our buffer we want the buffer to be match or as close as we can we we want this condition and the other condition is we want it to be concentrated um, more concentrated than a strong acid or strong base being added Okay, so for this problem, um, we want the pH, this, to match the pKa. Uh, and the closest one we will find here is going to be probably acetic acid. So remember, a good way to, um, a good way to approximate is these are going to be, the pKa of these is going to be around, is going to be around 2.0. Okay, and if you take the negative log of, let's say, the monochloracetic acid, so we take the negative log of that one, then we get 2.8, so the negative log of this is around, is going to be around 3 or so. Okay, here we're getting closer, so the negative log of four, uh, 7.2, is still around three so when you have a number here it's going to make it a little lower than that number so what we want is a little lower than five so these are probably going to be your best choice around here okay so if you know if you know that the log just brings down the exponent this is going to be around you know this is going to be less than four all of these right here are going to be less than four um, and this is going to be around two so these are going to be way off right here Okay, so this number right here will be less than 7. Okay, and then these are going to be something around 9, something like that. Okay, so this is this is about what we want is these. So if I take the negative log of acetic acid, I get um, the pKa of acetic acid, I get 4.74. Okay, so this is this is about this is a good choice. It may not be the best, but it's the one I'm going to use for this problem. So it says which acid would be best, and then it says describe how to prepare this buffer. So what they're asking here is what volumes, okay, what concentration and volumes should we use? Okay, so I'm going to use this um, ratio form pH minus pKa, okay, and uh, I'm going to solve for this ratio okay so I'm gonna go 10 to the 4.35 minus the pK of acetic acid 4.74 okay and my answer I get is actually this 0 0.41 over 1 so what that means is I want to use um, 
I want to use the base, which is C2H3O2 minus 0.41 molar. Um, and then for the acid, for the conjugate acid, I want to use one molar. Okay, and then what volumes of each is, I want one liter, so you just use 500 milliliters of each. Okay, so we use 500 milliliters of this, and we're going to use 500 milliliters of this, of the conjugate. Okay, that way the total volume is going to be, so if I add these two together, the total volume here will be, is going to be one liter, okay? And so one times this gives me the moles, so that's going to be 0.41, okay? And then one times this is the mole, so this is 1.0. So that way I get my ratio if I use 500 of each, okay? And then um, if I if I double check this in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, I'll get pH equals pKa plus the log of, so my total volume again is one, so it's gonna be the log of 0.41 over one, okay? And then um, I should get my answer here, it should be 4.35 if I double check my work here. Okay, so that's how I would do that problem. Okay, the first year turn is just like that, but I chose a different pH. Okay, so you're going to end up using a different acid that I used. Okay, and then you'll do this one very, very similar to how I just did that example. Okay, so um, I'll leave it here for you to pause for a second to write out the problem. Okay, so you could pause it and write the, um, complete that problem. And then my second year turn is what volumes of 0.5 molar um, chlorous acid, and here's the Ka, and 0.5 molar of the conjugate would be, be needed to create one liter of buffer at 2.0. So the difference here is I gave you set concentration, so you cannot change this or dilute it. These are set numbers here. Okay, so you're gonna wanna go back to um, this part of the video um, and then apply this to try to solve that question. So let me go back to that, your turn. Okay, so that's the end of our video. Let's see what you guys come up with for those your turns.